and take a look at a legal problem called maximal square. So given m times n binary matrix filled with zeros and ones, find the largest square containing only ones and return its area. So you can see we have a 2D array and then uh, we want to find the largest uh, or the maximal square and a square basically has a uh, width that's uh, or the length or the size, uh, the width of these, uh, the square is equal, right? All four width of the square is all equal to each other. So you can see there, you can see that we can have a two by two or a three by three or one by one and so on and so forth. So we cannot have a two by four or we cannot have a two by three, right? So that's gonna be a rectangle, right? We cannot have something like this, right? So like we cannot have something like this. This, this is a rectangle, so it's not a square. So that's not possible. And we cannot also have something like this where we have one, 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 zero, right? That's not gonna be a square. We can, then the maximum square in this case is gonna be just one, right? It's not gonna be two, two by two, right? So in this case, uh, we want to return the maximum square uh, value, right? So you can see we have a given 2D array and then the maximum square value is gonna be four, right? Uh, is a two by two, right? The width is a two, right? The two, so two times two is gonna be four. So in this case, uh, we one way we can do this, right? And you can see here, there's another example, right? Where we have zero, one, one, zero. Uh, in this case, the maximum square that we have is just gonna be one. This is not a square, right? So in this case, we have to, the maximum square that we, that we can, that we've seen is going to be just one, right? And then you can also see that if we just have like one value and this is a zero, then we're just going to return zero because there's no maximum square. And notice that they're giving you, we're giving, uh, they're giving you a uh, character 2D array, not an integer, right? Not a string, not an integer. So we need a, we need to, uh, when we deal with this problem in code, we have to convert this into an integer. So what we can solve this problem is we can use a brute force approach. And basically the idea is that for each and every single elements in the grid, we basically just going to uh, see if this is a square or not. And, and, and then we're just going to traverse each and every single element in the, in the grid to figure out the maximum square. And for each and every single element, we're gonna see if this, is a, uh, if this current uh, element is a one. If it is, we're gonna see if the, the, the right the, the diagonal, uh, or I should say the, the bottom right, and the bottom is all one. If they're all one, then this is a two by two. And then same thing for this element right here, we have to do kind of like a DFS kind of thing. We just check to see if it's children or it's uh, neighbor values or right, bottom and bottom right are all ones. If it is, then that's another, um, basically that's another one, right? and check to see if this has another square. And if this is a square, this is a square, and this is a square, then this is a three by three. And we have to continue to check its following neighbors, right? And this will give us a time complexity of big O of M times N square, okay? Because for each and every single element, we have to uh, check its neighbor uh, to figure out if th this, to figure out the maximum square for this current position. And we also have to do that for other positions as well. So kind of like a nested for loop. So this will give us a time complexity of an M times N squared, right? So what we can do better is we can basically use a top-down approach uh, using memoization, right? And uh, basically the idea is that we can be able to cache these results, these computer results, right? Because we need to figure out uh, if uh, the maximum square for this position, we need to figure out the maximum square for this position, and this position, and this is a position. And if we want to figure out the maximum position for this position, then we need to know its neighbor, right? And you will notice that we are looking to find the maximum square for this position twice, because one is here and one is here. So what we can do is we can break it down to a solve problems, right? If I have just this, right? If I have just this, like zero, one, one, zero, like what's the maximum square? Then I need to find, okay, well I need to go here, I need to go here, I need to go here and find it. Then in this case, this has a maximum square of one, this has a maximum square of one, this has a maximum square of zero. So what's the maximum square for this element right here? Then in this case, it's gonna be just gonna be a zero because the, 
th this element is zero. But if I have just a one, right, then this is still going to be one because uh, we cannot form a two by two because this has a zero here, right? And if this is a zero, then we cannot have a one because this is not a one, right? This is a zero, so we this is not a square, so we, therefore we cannot form a square there. So that's basically how we solve this sub problem, right? We basically break it down, right? If we only have zero, one, one, zero, then we have to go through all three directions to figure out the smallest uh, uh, maximum square for all three directions, and then to compute the current maximum square value, and then return its current maximum square value to its parent's stack, right? So in this case, we need to be able to cache this result because there could be a situation where we are calling, where, where we want to know the maximum square for this position multiple times. So in this case, we will save the current uh, current position's maximum square value in a 2D array, right? And then um, there could also be a situation, right, where we have a bottom value like this, where you can see that there is no nothing that we can go for the bottom or the bottom right. So so what's the maximum square, right? In this case, if there's nothing in the bottom, then we cannot form a like something like this or a rectangle. That's not gonna pop. That's not gonna be possible. So the maximum square for this value right here is gonna be the current value itself. If this is a one, then the maximum square that you can form is a one. If this is a zero, the maximum square that you can form here is gonna be a zero, right? So that's gonna be a base case there. So now we know how to do this. Let's take a look at the code for the top-down approach. So in a top-down approach, <clears throat> uh, basically you can see here, we going to have a 2D array, right? This top-down approach going to use memoization, and uh, we're going to have a table with m times m times n, and then we're going to call this helper function. We start at the the top left, right? The top left, which is right here, and then we're trying to find the maximum width, right? In this case, the maximum width has a initial value of the minimum value, integer dot minimal value, right? And then what we're going to do inside the helper function is we take the uh, the current row and the current column. If the current row and the current column is out of bound, then we just can return zero because we cannot find a, um, uh, in this case, we cannot find the maximum square, right? Um, and then if the current position is already computed before, then we can return the pre-computed value. Um, and then for each cell, right, we have three decision. We can go to the right, we can go to the right down, we can go, we have to go to the down as well. And then once we have those values, we can be able to get the minimum value, right? The minimum width of the square, right? Notice we're getting the width, not the actual square value. So the minimum width for all three directions, once we do that, right? Because like I said earlier, we could have a situation where we have one, 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 zero. And in this case, we have to find a minimum value. If the minimum value is zero, then there, therefore, we the 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 width for the maximum square for this current position is going to be one plus the minimum value, which is a zero, right? So in this case, the maximum square that you can form is going to be just one. So same thing here. I find the minimum width. I check to see if the current value is a one, right? If it is a one, then what we're going to do is we're just going to get the current width plus the minimum width, right? And then we're going to get current, uh, we're going to save the current computer result onto a cache. And then this is our core stuff, right? For each and every single uh, recursion stack, right? Because we're going to compute it once, we're going to make sure we update the max width. And the max width is going to be the current width or the, the maximum width that we've seen so far. And at the end, we're just going to return the current width back to the, the root stack, right? And then at the end, once we uh, updated the max width, we're just going to get max width time max width, which give us the maximum square value at the entire grid. So this will give us a time complexity of um, um, big O of M times N, and so does the space complexity as well, right? So in this case, um, let's take a look at how we can be able to optimize this in using a bottom-up approach. And to use a bottom-up approach, uh, basically, what I did here is um, I used 
a 2D array, in this case a 2D array, but the thing is that I use something with which is like m plus 1 and n plus 1. Um, let me tell you why in a second, but basically the idea <clears throat> is the same. We get, we basically um, check the top left and the top left instead of the bottom, uh, instead of the bottom right uh, or the bottom right, right? So we're going in the reverse order or like a reverse direction. Like we're going from the top all the way to the bottom, right? Last time before we kind of go to the very bottom and then we're just going to like, like compute those results uh, from the bottom all the way to the top. So this time we're just going to reverse order. And then you notice here that um, first what I did is I get the top and I get the left and then I get the top left, right? And then I have the minimum value, the minimum value out of all those three. And then we can be able to save the current value if the current position is a one, right? And then we, then we, for each iteration, we're gonna make sure we update the maximum width. At the end, we're just gonna return the maximum square value. And let me show you an example, right? If I have um, this, uh, maybe this square right here, right? I have, you know, in this case, m plus one and n plus one, right? So I have zero, 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 and zero uh, here, right? Because in this case, we're starting um, at index one, right? So the uh, the first row and the first column. So the, this for this position, we have to look at see if this element is a is a, zero, is a one. If it's not a one, we're gonna skip, right? We're gonna continue just like how we did it in our code, right? We're gonna continue, or not maybe not continue, but like kind of like if the current position is not a one, then we're just going to continue. Otherwise, we're just going to proceed this code right here, right? And you can see this is a this is a one. So if this is a one, then we're going to look at top, the top left, and the left, right? So in this case, we have a zero. So the maximum value, uh, the minimum value is of zero. Zero plus one is a one. So the maximum square that you can have for this position is one. Same thing here, right? And uh, we look at all three directions. It's fine if there is a zero. Uh, in this case, there is a zero. Uh, so, sorry, the minimum value. In this case, they're all zero. So the minimum value is zero. Zero plus one is just one. And then for this position, because this is a zero, we're just gonna skip, so we have a zero there. So the maximum square is just gonna be one, right? And let's say we have a one here and a one here, right? And it's the same thing. Like, we know that this is a one. So we basically check all three direction, right? We check here, we check here, we check here. And then in this case, the minimum value is a one. So it's gonna be, because this element right here is a one, so one plus the minimum value is gonna be one, so we have two, right? So they, it works the same thing, but the thing that this way or this approach does it better because uh, you don't have to compute the first row. Usually when you do a bottom approach, you have to compute the first row and then you com compute the remaining rows, right? Kind of like a separate loops, kind of like a set, another for loop here, another for loops, another nest of for loops at the bottom, right? So this will basically save uh, this much of code. And then, but the things that you have to uh, increase the space, right, by one for the rows and columns. So in this case, the time complexity is still big O of M times N and the space complexity is still M times N as well. But what, but the thing is that what we can do to improve it better for the space complexity is that we can um, be able to just use a two arrays, right? We, if we use two arrays, the one array compute the previous row and the, another array compute the current row. We use the previous row data to compute the current row. And then once we complete the computation com, uh, computation for the first row, current row, uh, get the previous row point to the current row. And then the current row is gonna be a new array that uh, basically computes the current row's data based on the previous row's data, right? So this will basically optimize this, the space complexity to a uh, big O of n, where n is number of columns that we have in the matrix. But you get an idea. So this is how we solve the problem, this problem, in a top-down approach as well as a bottom-up approach. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.